Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here. And today, I'm answering, well, the question that you see in the title, and that is, is this game worth playing in 2023? Which is a question that's asked by what's usually one or two players. And I've divided this video up into those sections respectively because I don't believe there's a simple yes or no answer to this question because the type of player that's asking this question, hey, is this game worth playing? Is it worth playing anymore? So forth and so on. They're normally either a new player that has never played this game whatsoever or they are a returning player that's taken like a year or two off and they're thinking about getting back into the game. And I've, I've been seeing about an equal amount of both. So what we're going to do is if you check the time bar down below, I've divided the video up into uh, three sections. I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion on the game currently, then I'm going to try and answer the question directed at newer players, and then I'm going to try and answer the question directed at older players. But the older players, uh, there's typically two subdivisions of those older players. There's those that are willing to adapt to the new things that have been added to the game, and then there's the older school players. So that one's a bit more, of course, nuanced than just the newer players. So with that out of the way, if you do find yourself enjoying this video, find informational, entertaining, or anything like that, please do drop a like, leave a comment, helps out on the YouTube side of things, and let's go ahead and get into it with my opinion on the game. So Obviously, if you are interested in this game, you are interested in that, you know, mid 20th century naval combat, you know, big gun battleships, ships that still have armor and all that jazz. That's this age of naval warfare. And this is simply put the best mid 20th century naval combat game out there. In second place would be War Thunder Naval. War Thunder Naval is a different cup of tea, and again, this game's biggest competitor. Which, if you go look at War Thunder Naval, then look at this game, yeah, the market's not really, let's say, flooded with choices for games that have this level of design and support behind them. You know, there's a big dev team, it receives very regular updates. Again, it's really only World Thunder Naval and World of Warships. What makes this game the best, in my opinion, is that it leans more to the arcadey side of things with a lot of mechanics and such that are super arcadey but have some type of basis in reality. So it makes it more fun and entertaining and active than like War Thunder Naval. War Thunder Naval, even though they've decreased the range recently, for example, in a lot of the maps that, at least, you know, the maps I was getting when I, I went through my tear on it, they're still very far away and it's very boring for a good chunk of the game and the matches last for like 50 minutes sometimes, right? Yeah, I know I say a lot that the games are too short sometimes in this game, but there's a difference between a 5 minute match or a 20 minute match and a 50 minute match in War Thunder Naval. So I do believe it is the best designed one right now that's currently available that has this level of support and receives regular updates. However, on the other side of that is the increased push for monetization. Like I even released a video on this last week, how we have upwards, I think it's like seven or eight or nine different events that are still going on right now, where they're trying to push you to buy, of course, early access to this ship, early access to this line, uh, you know, gamble away in this event and this, that, and the other. But like many a comment does say in that video, at the moment, all that stuff is completely optional. It's kind of shoved in your face, but what free-to-play game doesn't do that? You know, it is optional for the moment. You don't have to spend money in this game at all, and you can still have a blast. Again, I know many a player that hasn't spent a single dime on this game. I know a guy that he's spent like five bucks on it, and he's got everything that he's ever wanted, right? So, it's a free-to-play game that's still entirely possible to play, free-to-play, and you can grind up to tier 10. The grind's not bad at all, especially, again, compared to something like War Thunder. And it is one of the more actual free-to-play games. Like, a lot of free-to-play games, especially free-to-play mobile games, they're free-to-play, but there ain't nothing free about it. And again, Wargaming is, unfortunately, kind of pushing the monetization more and more, but that's a separate video for a different day. So... That's my opinion on the game at the moment, as much as I can get into in you know, a, a 
15 minute video. So going to the new players, if you are completely new to this game and you are considering trying it out or getting involved in it, what I would suggest to you is simply download it and just grind up to tier 6. Grinding up to tier 6, you start to see what the game is really like. Uh, low tier is... <laughs> Low tier is actually pretty fun. Um, tier 4 and tier 6, though, that you're going to start running to the CVs and the submarines, and there's a lot of them down there at that tier. So why do I say, you know, grab to tier 6 and then think about it? Well, because, again, that's where a lot of the CVs and the submarines are right now. Because tier 4 to tier 6, it's not a hard grind at all to get there. Um, you'll probably be to tier 6 in, like, maybe two days if that tier five is a bit of a grind but again with how the game's grind is if you play the game for like two or three hours a day a day tier six is nothing to get to once you get to tier seven to tier eight that's where the real grind does start but you will have experience probably double cv games double submarine games even <laughs> double cv and double submarine games and if you get through that and you're like you know what this isn't that bad. I kind of enjoy this. Then you're probably going to enjoy the game. Because tier 8 on up, there's a pretty sharp drop off in the amount of CVs and submarines. Because, you know, obviously, again, the grind from tier 7 to tier 8 is a bit, a bit tougher. The economy is a bit rougher at tier 8 plus. And, you know, the submarines and the CV players, you really have to know what you're doing in order to make a profit in terms of credits and such in order to, of course, keep playing. So, if you like it up to Tier 6, you're probably going to like the rest of the game. Do know that, of course, from Tier 7, 8, 9, and 10 on up, you are going to start running into longer range engagements and, of course, super ships. But again, if you can get through the submarines and the CVs at Tier 4 to Tier 6... I think you're going to be fine. If you wonder why I'm saying tier 4 to tier 6, because tier 1 to tier 3, you're going to get through that in like 10 games, if that. You really won't spend much time there at all. So if you make it through to tier 6, and again, you deal with the double submarines, the double CV games, and you're like, yeah, you know what? I kind of like this. You're probably going to be able to deal with the super ships just fine, in my opinion. So if you do make it to that, and you find yourself having a good time, I'd say, yeah. It's definitely worth playing. Again, don't spend any money or anything like that. Definitely not until you've at least grinded out to your first tier 10. Then, you know, once you have a better idea of what it's the uh, individual tiers are like and stuff, you can look into then, you know, maybe getting some premium time or maybe a premium ship um, at that point. But again, don't spend any money on it if you're just trying it out. That's the best advice I think, you know, you can get. Now, going on to the returning players. Again, there's two types of returning players. The first ones are the ones that are willing to adapt. Those of you are probably the guys that have seen like the, you know, the submarine videos, the super ship videos, and you're like, oh, this looks either kind of interesting or, you know, it came up in your feed and it's intriguing and you guys are like, mm, maybe I want to get back into it. Well, again, just hop in and try it out. Again, don't spend any money or anything. Just pop into a few games, play for an hour or so. From my experience, in about an hour gaming session, you're going to have some pretty terrible games, and you are also going to have some pretty good games. So hop in, see what it's like. If you like the new mechanics and the new classes and stuff, then, yeah, of course, it's definitely worth playing because you're enjoying yourself. And that's, again, a main thing that gaming is supposed to be, enjoyable. So if you find yourself having a good time and enjoying the game that you are playing, then the answer is, of course, yes, it's worth playing again. So there's only so much you can glean from YouTube videos, right? Because ev everyone has their own opinion. I have my own opinion. Everyone puts their own spin on everything, right? So I try to be as impartial as I can be, and I get called a wargaming shill on one hand, and I get called someone that just loves to make uh, rage bait videos, right? On the other hand, so I think when I'm being called both things, I'm probably doing a good job of being somewhere in the middle. So... But yeah, you know, even I have my own personal biases, you know, I, I like brawling and I like close range combat, so obviously, you know, I'm not that happy with the higher tier meta at the moment, but there's that. So again, try it out for yourself. Now, you old school players, you are the guys I can give a bit more of a concrete answer to. 
if you like that old school like 2018 to 2019 2020 what warships where you know it's mostly battleships cruisers and destroyers in game with the occasional cv thrown in there and you like that older you know first four or five years of the game's life cycle gameplay style that game is just about dead right because we have a pretty constant supply of cv players and cvs and higher tier it will show all, all up and down the tiers we have submarines obviously those were not a thing back in the day then they do bring a lot of changes to the game we have super ships we have so many gimmicks in the game now it's gone from being very arcadey to pretty much being an arcade game almost at this point uh like i said w with some aspects based in reality but they've just gone full tilt arcade with it at this moment so that version of the game is pretty much gone and the way the devs have been going recently you know we're getting hybrid ships now we started with hybrid battleships the Issei and the Kearsarge got hybrid cruiser with the Tone we got a freaking hybrid DD now the Halford so they're they're not gonna stop obviously going in this direction because they've already <laughs> went pretty hardcore we have a whole line of hybrid battleships now with the American hybrid battleship line so if you're one of those old school players then obviously they're not going to go back, right? They're not going to just remove submarines. They're not going to remove hybrid ships. They're not going to... Well, CVs have been in the game since the game started, which I think it's weird that people say, you know, CVs should be removed, yada, 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 even though they've been here the whole time. And again, they were much more powerful back in the day than they are today. So that's another video for another day. But it's not going to go back. That That's the truth. It's not going to go back to that. 2017 to 2020 2019 game so if that's the game you want then yeah no that that game's gone and it's not worth playing the game in 2023 if again that's the gameplay style that you like so that's my answer to you guys now again if you're willing to adapt to these new mechanics if you find yourself having fun sure it's worth playing but if you get in, you don't like the submarines, you don't like the super ships, um, again, I would highly, highly suggest, you know, try to learn the mechanics, learn how the ships work, learn how to counter them. And if you do all that and you still, you know, you don't like the, the submarine's ability to spot you undetected and shotgun you, and you don't like the super ship, the super ships and their gimmick, and you don't like dealing with them, even though, you know, you understand their mechanics and stuff, then, yeah, it's not worth playing. If the game's not, if you're not having fun with it, don't play it. It's a video game. It's meant to be your escapism from the everyday suck that is life, right? So, if you're not having fun, don't play the game. And obviously, don't spend money on the game if you're not having any fun. So, that's my two cents on this topic. I hope I could answer your question if you got, if you're one of those guys that were asking, hey, you know, is this game still worth playing in 2023? Either from the perspective of, of a new player, or of an older player that's willing to adapt, or an old, just old school player that just misses the old World of Warships. So, that is my two cents on that topic. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Just past 50k, go make sure you enter into the giveaway by commenting on Monday's video. You can see the instructions at the start of that video there. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.